Hello, cool artisans. My name is Shonda, and welcome to my channel, Under the Needle Quilting and Crafts. Um, I don't know why I said that like that. Um, well, welcome to my channel. Um, I am Thursday. I am Thursday. It's Thursday. <laughs> I am Shonda. It is Thursday. And so I am here for Thankful Thursday. Um, I'm going to start off with what I'm thankful for. I am thankful that I am feeling some creative spirit again. You know, I've been really struggling. You know, I've been really struggling, not like with my mental health. My mental health is actually better than ever. And I'm thinking that's why I haven't been wanting to sew as much because I sew as a way to escape like problems and, you know, life issues and stuff like that. And things have been really well for me right now. And so I haven't felt the need to kind of escape. <laughs> So I've been trying to like force myself to sew and I think I feel I, I realize what it is. It's that I don't like picking up an existing project and having to figure out where I left off. I would much rather start a completely new project from scratch than to have to go in those bins I have back there and figure out where I'm at in a project. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because there's, there's, it's time consuming, right? When I start a new project, it's really easy, right? Because immediately you're ironing and then you're cutting and then you're sewing, you're off to the races. But when you're picking up something in the middle, you kind of, there's, there's this period where you kind of got to figure out where you left off and for me that takes like an hour and I just haven't wanted to do that I haven't wanted to do that <laughs> so I think that's why I haven't been doing as much sewing because like when I start creating I want to just kind of just go and I can't do that when I pick up an existing project and I refuse to start anything new because I already have too many existing projects. So I refuse to start a new project. And I think that's why I've been kind of placating myself with these small projects because there are things that I can get done in a day or two and then they're completed. And so I'm not creating additional unfinished projects. So I think what I'm going to try to do, I don't know how successful I'm going to be, <laughs> uh, but I, I think I'm going to try to choose one project this weekend, one, one. And I think I'm gonna take the project to bed with me. And I'm gonna do the figuring while I'm in bed. So I don't have to do it down here. So so I, I'm, this is a long thankful thing, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm finally figuring this out. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna take one of my projects to bed with me tonight. And when I would normally be crocheting, I am going to figure out where I'm at in that project, get it organized so that I can pick it up and start sewing without having to think about it. Because the last project that I had like that, everything that I had that I didn't have to think about that I could just start sewing is already put together. It's sewn already. Um, it might not be finished, but it's sewn. So I had um, these little blocks here from um the stripology retreat earlier this year so i've got these blocks put together i have four of these i gotta choose my backing and figure out you know how i'm gonna finish them but you know i finished those blocks and i sewed them together i had some other blocks from the stripology retreat i finished those i've got those blocks together and i don't know why i always start flashing like, I always have a hot flash when I'm filming. I don't know why. But it's like, as soon as I turn that camera on, I start sweating. I, I can't explain it. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I've kind of... I don't, I don't have anything I can just pick up and start sewing. I had three things, three projects that I was working on that were in progress, that were kind of just ready to sew, that I didn't have to figure out. And I've sewn them all. And so now I'm like, I don't feel like figuring out stuff, but I need to figure out stuff. So I did do some sewing. I did. I did. 
Not much, but I did. Um, and one of the Open Gate Quilt subscription boxes, this was some months ago now, we had this panel project. And I had started quilting it, because remember, um, I started quilting it on the new on my new sewing machine and I was using the um, cuz this sewing machine has a stitch regulator module that comes with it and so I was trying to learn that and it was giving me many many problems so I only got this outer portion this outer border quilted and not the center because I just gave up and I have not free motioned on this machine since I did that <laughs> Since I did the edge, I don't, I don't think that I have, have I? I don't think I have. If I did, it was straight line, but I don't think I've done any quilting. Um, but I did not use the stitch regulator. I just used my hands and my, my foot pedal. But I did get this thingy quilted. Just basic loops and swirls. That's my go-to. You can kind of see them there. This is the back. So this is quilted. So now it just needs to be trimmed up and I need to add the binding. So that's another thing that I'm going to do um, because the binding, we're doing bias binding for this and I've never done bias binding before. Um, Monique did provide some instructions on how we need to cut our fabric and how we need to cut the strips, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. I've cut the fabric, but I don't feel comfortable cutting the strips. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to watch her um, video because she does a video. When uh, For the larger project, there is always a video that accompanies that project. And so I'm gonna go watch the video so I can learn how to do this bias binding. And, um, yeah, so I want to get that. I want to get this finished. I want to get this done. If I just if I just get the binding on this, I think that I'd be happy with that as a successful weekend, to be honest. <laughs> and if I can get one thing figured out, like one of my projects back there, and just get it figured out and ready to sew, I'd be happy with that. Um, I have done some crochet. Um. I know last week I showed you guys that I had finished my blanket, but I'm going to show it to you again because I love it so much. Yes, my blankie. I love how it came out. I have to wash it, but I'm afraid. I'm probably going to put it in a laundry bag. Um, you know, because, you know, they make those... Um, net those small little net or mesh bags um for like your um your delicate undergarments like your bras and stuff like that so they don't get all wound up and stuck on stuff in the washing in the washing machine but also you know they make those same mesh bags um they make those same mesh bags um for laundry you know like they always sell them at back to school you know for the college kids in the dorms those uh, large mesh laundry bags well i put i put stuff in there <laughs> i i wash my stuff in there so something like this i would put this in that bag in that laundry bag and tie it up and then wash it and that's how i wash my crochet items so i don't have to worry about um, stuff it catching on stuff um, I had started a blanket last week but and I finished it it this was a quick finish this was this was quick this was a quick stitch it's a small blanket it only used 440 yards of yarn so this was this was just fast I'll probably donate this at some point. I don't know. I mean, it does match my house. I mean, it's a fine little thing to just kind of throw over you. But, you know, I kind of like my blankets to be a bit more large. 
you know, maybe if I was a tiny person, you know, like if I was a hundred pounds, maybe, maybe this would be fine. But, you know, I'm a beefier woman. And so I like my blankets to cover a little bit more of me. Um, but I think this is fine for like a car, but I think I have other quilts like that. Um, but actually, I think this would be better in a car than a quilt, just because it's a bit more flexible. Get this, I mean, this would be good. This would be good in a car, but I would never use this at home. It just there's just too many other blankets I would reach for before I would reach for this. And I did start two additional blankets. Um. I thought this was going to be a super quick make as well, but it's not because the stitch pattern that I chose, um, it just takes a little bit more time than the that other blanket I was showing. So I'm working on this one right now. It's kind of got this ribbing going down. It's called the Bricks, Bricks, Burnett Bricks blanket. But basically, the pattern forms this line of ribbing down the entire blanket. So I had eight skeins of yarn. I had four of these, um, kind of gray and white. And then I have four of these. So the plan, actually, no, I have eight. No, no. Yeah, I have four of each. Jesus Christ. I have four of each. Four of each, eight total. So I worked up this whole skein of yarn here. This is I've only got a little bit of yarn left. It's not enough to do a whole row. And I didn't get very far. I didn't get very much height from my blanket. Um, my width is where I like it. It's, it's a good width. It's probably... I don't know, maybe 48 inches long or something like that. Let's see if I can measure it real quick. I don't know. Let's see. I want to say it's probably about 48 if I had to guess, right? Oh, 50. 50, 50 to 51 inches wide. And I only got, out of this one skein of yarn, 5 inches of height or length, whatever you want to call it. That's it. So five times eight is 40. So my blanket's going to end up 40 by 50. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I do want my cables to be running this way. So I ordered another skein of yarn in this color. Um, technically, it's two skeins. Anyway, it's, it's the equivalent of two of these. I have the smaller ones, so I ordered one that's the equivalent of two of these. So when I'm done, hopefully I'll have something that's like 50 by 50. So, <laughs> so I'm working on this. This is interesting. This is an interesting project. It's, it's an easy stitch pattern. It's easy to follow. Um, so I do like that. But it definitely does take more time than uh, the blue and brown blanket that I put together. And then last but not least, I started this other blanket. I was debating um, whether I wanted to use, so I've got this Red Heart all-in-one granny yarn right here. And I was debating whether to, I was going to, I decided I was going to hold it double stranded to make it go faster. Um, and I was deciding if I was going to use this uh, Lion Brand Pound of Love I have in black, or if I was going to go with this Jiffy here in this cream color. I ended up going with the cream, although I'm shocked that I decided to go with the cream. I did. Um, and for two, two reasons. One, because I wanted to do something different. The black is so typical of something that I would do. So I wanted to do something different, different, but also really, I love this yarn. This, I've never used this, this yarn before, this lion brand Jiffy. 
I've never used it because I don't crochet that much. <laughs> I believe I've owned some of this yarn before, but I've not crocheted with it. And um, the yarn doesn't come in black. Maybe it used to at one time, but it does not come in black now. I checked the Lion Brand website. I checked Michael's. I checked Joann's. I checked Amazon. This They don't make this in black. Now... This, this yarn kind of came back, so like it, I think it went away and then came back um, and like as a limited release or something, and maybe that's why, but there's no black. If I could have gotten this yarn in black, this Jiffy yarn in black, um, I would have bought two skeins of this in black, and I would have used black. I would have, but I couldn't get this yarn in black. So um, this is what it's looking like. I would be further along, but I basically took everything out. I did, first of all, I did two gauge swatches um, because this particular pattern, it's called, um, I think it's called Life is Not a Race by Susan Kennedy, Susan E. Kennedy, Life is Not a Race. And the... Um, she says that the blanket grows, and I can attest to that. Um, I think when I started, my starting chain measured about 45 inches, and now that I've done about five rows, it's like 56 inches, um, so it's grown quite a bit. Um, initially, I did, so I did a gauge swatch in the black. I did a gauge swatch with the cream. I chose to use the cream. Um... And then, so I had to frog, I had to take, you know, completely undo the gauge swatch. And then I did about five rows of this and I did it using a 12, 12 millimeter hook. And I didn't like it. I, it was just, just too, too large, too gappy. So I took it all out, all five rows. And then I redid it using a 10 millimeter hook. And I like this better. But this is how it's looking so far. It actually looks way better in real life than it does on camera. So there's that. It does look better in real life. The camera really doesn't do it much justice. The black definitely looked better on camera than the cream, but um, the cream does look really good in real life. So if you're looking for a way to use your Red Heart all-in-one granny yarn and uh, you don't quite know what to do, um, you can just use it as regular yarn. You don't have to make granny squares. Um, what I did was, another thing that I did is I wanted to figure out uh, how many rows I would get from a skein. I'm going to have to redo that math now. Um, because originally with the 12 millimeter hook, um, I was guessing that I might get like 20 rows out of one skein or out of one one skein of the all in one before you know before it ran out. Um, I was guessing about 20 rows. I'm not sure about that now because I'm using a different hook, so I'm gonna have to go back and figure it out. But it's really easy to do. Because really all you have to do is count the number of stitches you make in a single color cycle. And what I mean by that is that since this is a granny square yarn, it, use, it starts with this light purple, right? It's kind of like a light pink or light purple. And then it moves to this dark purple, right? And then it moves to this, uh, hold on, make sure I'm doing it right. Then it moves to this orange. And then once it's done with the orange, it moves to this kind of brighter pink. And then it moves to the black. So really all I have to do is just wait until I get to the next, um, I have to wait until this light pink or purple starts over again. And then I could just count the number of stitches that I get um, until the black is over. So from when 
I mean, I could go through and count here now, but I don't want to do that. It's just going to be easier to count as I'm going. But um, yeah, if you, if you just count how many stitches you get, and then I know how many stitches um, are in each row, then I can guesstimate how many rows I'm going to get. So, And then I can kind of guesstimate how long my blanket is going to be. So, um, yeah, that's what I've been working on. Definitely doing more crochet than sewing. That is going to change. It is. It's going to change. <laughs> I think I'm just really, really, um, I like starting new things. <laughs> and I can't justify starting a new quilting project. But as long as I finish what I'm starting with the crochet, I, you know, I'm finishing. <laughs> I'm finishing stuff. <laughs> So I've got two crochet projects going right now. And then, of course, I've got my dishcloths as well. So like if I get bored with these and I just want a palette cleanser, I can just take an hour and make a dishcloth. And then I have something new that didn't take a lot of time, that didn't take a lot of yarn. Um, and then I'm not creating additional unfinished projects. So um, I'm happy in my crafting journey right now. I really am. Um, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I really am. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's what I've got going on. I appreciate you guys tuning in and, uh, I'll see you in the next video.